Are you ready to find out who the top 10 West Indies spinners of all time are? Join us right now. Number 10, Mark. Who are we going with on number 10, man? Let the viewers know. Yes, I'm going with Devinsha Bishu, the Ghana leg spin bowler. Played 36 test matches for West Indies. 117 wickets for 4,350 runs. Best of 8 for 47. Average of 37.17. A bit high. Bishu played from 20. 10 to 2020. Did a, a reasonable good job for West Indies. Did a good holding job from time to time. The issue with Bishu, he just didn't have the, the variety. He bore leg break, but he just lacked the different variety of the top class leg spinner. So that was the only downfall for me with Bishu. But on his day, was an accurate and very fine bowler. Highlighted by a couple of his match winning spells, which underscored his value to the West Indies. He definitely did provide, you know, a certain level of quality. And he could hold his own with the bat too, man. He was in like a uh, pushover. He could come in late order and hold an end. Yes, he was no mug with the bat. Had some valuable contributions low down the order for West Indies as well. Who are we going with on number nine? Yes, I'm going with Suleiman Ben from Barbados. Tall, lanky, left arm orthodox spinner. Very good control. Temperamental individual, but he got the job done for West Indies. Played 26 test matches, 87 wickets for 3,402 runs. Best of six for 81 average of 39.10 average a bit high but he was in and out of the team and he was always under pressure every time he showed up for West Indies you know to, to do well but he did a very good job in the context of his career for West Indies 87 wickets on 26 test matches that's a, a fair good click standing at 6'7 Ben's height it gave him an ultimate advantage and you know which allowed him obviously to generate considerable bounds from the pitch as well as becoming a key figure in that attack you know, his bowling style, I really like, Mark. He had this flowing action, you know, with both arms kind of flying like a cartwheel of sorts, right? He also had a couple of really good spells, match-winning spells for West Indies cricket. Solomon Ben, number nine. Number eight, Mark, who are we going with that number eight? Yes, Dinanat Ramnarayan, Trinidad and Tobago leg break quickly bowler. Played 12 test matches for West Indies, 45 wickets for 1,383 runs. Best of five for 58, average of 30.73. Ramda Ryan had a lot of variations of, as a leg spinner. I would have loved to see him got a longer run, but not sure what happened and he fell out of favor. When he played for West Indies, especially during the 1998 series versus England, he really put up some beautiful bowling spells. He mesmerized the English batsmen. You know, he had that quicker ball, googly, big leg break, uh, slider. You know, he had the variations. It's just a pity that he didn't play much more test matches for West Indies and I rated him very highly. A good feel as well. A very good cricketer. Career was short, obviously, and as you mentioned, Mark, but he did have an impact on the game and uh, was a really fine bowler. Dina Na. Ram Narayan comes in at number eight for us. Let us know what you guys think of these first three picks so far, guys. Mark, number seven, man, who are we going with on number seven? Yes, Roger Harper. Played from 1983 to 1993 for West Indies during the pace battery era. So he hardly got a lot of opportunities as an off spinner. Played 25 test matches, 26 wickets for 1,291 runs. Best of 6 for 57. Average of 28.07. He had a nice looping action. A very good feeler to his own bowling. He had a quicker delivery. Flights the ball well. Good loop. Quicker arm ball. So Roger Harper had a full repertoire. He was used for holding spells in a lot of the test matches he played. But with West Indies' four-prong pace attack, he had limited opportunities. But every time he got the chance, he made valuable contributions to West Indies. Considered an all-rounder who played in the 80s and 90s and was known for his exceptional fielding skills. And we brought this up in our other videos, Mark. Tall bowler at the height advantage, could generate extra bounds, but you know couldn't get the game time as some of the others, you know, fast bowlers or other West Indies players did so roger harper comes in at number seven for us before we move on to number six i want to let you guys know that this particular video is sponsored by caribbean man cricket bat so this is a caribbean man cricket bat guys tick willow beautiful willow this is a player's edition all right this one has eight nice beautiful greens nice thick bat this one is two pounds nine ounces packs a punch guys if you support the caribbean man cricket bat it could allow me to sponsor a lot of youngsters in the caribbean not just from my territory where i'm from you know as most people know I'm from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Windward Islands. I work with people in Barbados, Grenada, Jamaica, 
Antigua, all over the Caribbean. That's why I named my band Caribbean Man. I'm a Vincentian, but I'm a Caribbean man. All right, so guys, thanks. Try give it a shot. I'm going to link his Facebook page in the description. Mark's going to be launching his MSDA website, so you'll soon be able to acquire the gear that you need for your cricket season. So be sure to check out MSDA Cricket for your sporting gears and uh, anything that you would need for your cricket season coming up. So Mark, thank you again for sponsoring this video, man. Let's move on to number six, brother. Who are we going with on number six? Yes, I'm going with Rafi Jumidin left arm orthodox from Trinidad and Tobago played back in the 70s between 1972 and 1979 had a lot of variations for left arm spinner you know back in the day still in the 70s West Indies depended heavily on seam bowling the few opportunities he had he really created an impression he toured England 1972 with the West Indies team 12 test matches 29 wickets for 1,141 runs best of 4 for 72 average 29.34 a bit high but he had limited opportunities so that's why he was always under pressure in the first class competition the Caribbean Shell Shield he was a fantastic bowler always producing for Trinidad and Tobago although not celebrated as some of his team Teammates, you know, Jumadine provided the West Indies with a dependable spin option, particularly valuable again in home conditions where his style of bowling was specially effective. So Rafiq Jumadin comes in at number six for us. And before we move on, I want to give you guys a bit of a quick quiz question that we're going to answer at the end of this video. If you see it on the screen, you guys will see the question. In 1993, Brian Lara hit his first test century against Australia at the SCG. How many runs did he end up making and how was he out we're gonna drop the answer right at the end of the video so stay tuned mark let's move on to number five man who are we going with on number five yes another trinidad and tobago and left arm orthodox spinner in Chinali played 12 test matches for west indies 34 wickets for 1621 runs best of five for 59 played during 1971 1977 a very skillful bowler. He bowled left arm orthodox, but also bowled left arm wrist spin. A very good bowler. They call him the smiling assassin. The first class competition in the Caribbean. Picked up a lot of wickets for Trinidad and Tobago. And there was a little toss stop. The only reason why I went to internally over another Trinidad off spinner, Jack Noriega, is because Noriega only played two test matches. Noriega have one of the best bowling figures for West Indies in the history of test cricket. Nine for 95. He was an off spinner. That's just a little side note. And Inchinali was one the real deal. We all going back to this legacy. And it's hard to, and it was a bit unfair to the spin bowlers in the Caribbean. Because even though we had the fast bowlers, the fast bowlers was taking wickets, the spin bowlers was very accurate and produced for all their territories. But Trinidad basically produced most of the spin ball for the West Indies over a long period of time. That was our number five, guys. And Sean Ali, let us know what you guys think of these picks so far. We're getting into the top four now. You guys might find this a bit controversial. Some of you guys will probably love this next pick coming up. Let us know in the comments where you guys land if you like this pick or don't like this pick either way make sure to smash the like button helps out the algorithm we want to make sure that you know this video again reaches the maximum number of people so mark who's our number four man let the viewers know yes number four is rakim cornwell from antigua leeward islands off spinner only played 10 test matches 35 wickets best of seven for 75 average of 37.60 but the thing with rakim cornwell very accurate as a spin bowler you could depend on him over after over to produce very good bowling and economical bowling as well. He had good variations, had a quicker, quicker ball, but he actually spins the ball. For off spinner, he actually gets some good, some good bite, bounce, and turn. I just would have loved to see him get a longer run with West Indies team. For one reason or the other, he's out of the setup now, and a, and a given day could be a match winner. Rakim Cornwell, the man from Antigua, top class off spinner. Yeah, known for his obviously imposing physique. I know he's a right arm bowler, extract that is significant bounds and a unique threat in modern day cricket especially in test cricket but not given the long leash obviously fitness versus the skill debate we've seen that come into cricket recently with a lot of players from different countries azam khan from pakistan you know, rakim cornwall you know how do you see that mark within cricket i mean skill is skill man that's how i see it if he's able to perform a certain set of skill if he's picked as a spinner he has the qualities or the skills to do the job better than other guys in the setup then might as well stick with the guy why bring such a vast type of overthinking into, into the game well i don't know how you feel about that you want to let the viewers know your thoughts 
thoughts on it, man? Yeah, there, there are pros and cons when it comes to that debate. What I would say, as a bowler, he does a great job. But the negative impact is that he only could feel a first slip, can't trace down the ball, running between the wickets, he could only drop one. It, it impacts the team from um, losing some valuable runs while he's batting and the outfield, you know, he, he can't chase the ball to the boundary. Doing his main job as a bowler, he does an excellent job. He's a good bowler. If he can contribute with the bat to make up for the runs that he gives away in the field, then I don't see an issue with it. Back in the day, you had a lot of good players who were kind of a bit big. Into Mam Ol Hak was, was a big guy. Marv Hughes was a big, big guy. Joel Angel was a big, tall guy. But they move around in the field. It's just a matter of preference, the selector's preference, really. We used to say there's a thing called fitness and there's a thing called cricket fit, right? So they're two separate things because you particularly don't need to be super, super fit to be cricket fit right but it's still the guys back in the day that some of the names you mentioned they still had that cricket fitness even though they were big in stature they were still able to chase the ball to the boundary i've seen nz chase a ball i've seen him run twos and threes i think that's where i think maybe rakeem cornwall may have lacked a little bit because he i think you know kind of went out of that that kind of zone so i don't know what you all you guys think on this debate let us know in the comments where you land on it and what are your thoughts on this particular debate but skill is skill i don't know how we want to kind of finish that debate off with mark well i could understand you because over the years i'm not the fittest guy i mean yeah. i put in the work i put in the work i go to the park i jog or everything like that and i could bat the whole day you have a good point yeah, absolutely. that's where we're going to end that debate guys again let us know in the comments what you guys think top three man who are we going with on number three man yes i'm going with alf a valentine from jamaica left arm orthodox spinner he partnered sonny ramadan in the 1950s to 60s with west indies um, cricket team you know a very accurate left arm spin while ramadan would be mesmerizing the batsman he did a good holding job he turned the ball away from the batsman had good variations and he was very accurate that's how valentine played his role. 26 test matches, 139 wickets for 4,215 runs, best of eight for 104, an average of 30.32. Art Valentine, one of the stalwarts of West Indies cricket. He debuted against England, which saw him taking 33 wickets, a remarkable achievement that helped the West Indies to historic series victory. Valentine's ability to deliver long spells of tight attacking bowling made him a key player for the West Indies through the 1950s. And he's one of those celebrated spinners from the history, Alf Valentine, and definitely one of the all-time greats of the game. Earlier in the video, guys, we had asked you guys a question about Brian Lara, 1993, when he hit his first century against Australia at the SCG. How many runs did he end up making and how was he out? We want to let you guys know before we move on to number two. The answer to this question, I'm going to pop on the screen, score 277 runs, and the way he got out was run out. Lara came to the crease with the West Indies in trouble at 2 for 31 and proceeded to destroy an Australian attack with, you know, Richie Richardson, who made 109 as they shared a partnership of 293. Quiz questions that we're going to try and incorporate more of in our videos. So, you know, be, be on the lookout. A side note, yeah. too, he wasn't really out run out because Healy broke the stump and the ball was not in his hand. So technically, yeah. he was not out run out, but he was beating the Aussies. That's one of the greatest innings I ever saw. And I watch it live as a young yeah. boy. Be on the lookout for other quiz questions. And the number one, you guys remember, we'll have to take a guess at. We're going to give you guys the detail and announce it right at the end of the video. Let the viewers know, man, who number two. Yes, number two is Sunny Ramadan. And before I get into Sunny Ramadan, Ramadan and Valentine both played two first class matches and then were selected for West Indies team. All from two first class matches. So basically, they, they saw the potential in these two spin bowlers, both Ramadan from Trinidad and Tobago, Valentine from Jamaica, both played two first class matches and were selected for West Indies. So that's what some good vision by the West Indies selectors. So Ramadan played from 19. 50 to 1961, it was some sort of what you call a mystery spinner. He bowled off breaks, but bowled leg breaks as well. He played 43 test matches, 158 wickets for 4,579 runs, best of 7 for 49, an average of 28.98. Valentine and, and Ramadan, I said, bowled, bowled in tandem and partnerships together for West Indies. And a little side note there with Ramadan. Ramadan once bowled a spell, 98 overs, 35 maidens, 179 runs, two wickets in 1957. Peter May and Colin Crowdry was the two English man, batsmen, both scored a double century, big grandfather centuries. So that's just a little side note there. He was playing for Lancashire in the English Concrete Championship. And in 1965, they terminated his contract 
of broccoli for lack of form. So even if he was a stalwart spinner for West Indies, a great off spinner, he didn't produce the goods for, Eng for the English team and they just discard him just like that. You know, so it just shows you it doesn't matter who you are, you have to be always on your A game because you've always been scrutinized as a cricketer. And even from way back in the 60s, currently, that's why I always tell a lot of these youngsters, especially leg spinners too, you always have to be on your game, practicing, because it's, leg spin is a really hard art. Ramadan Mass, both, but he was more of our spinner, but the change up and the slider and the quicker delivery. You could ball long, unrelenting spells, again, which made him a formidable force in Test cricket in the 50s and 60s. And Ramadan's legacy includes part uh, being part of that team that secured the West Indies' first Test win in England alongside, you know, Al Valentin, as I mentioned. Both those guys were, you know, superstars in that series in the 50s against England. So number two, Sonny Ramdeen comes in at, you know, number two. If you guys have enjoyed this video so far, guys, you know, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, but check out our membership section with three different tiers and also check out the Reverse Scoop shop, which supports youth cricket, you know, development here in New Milford, Connecticut you know, beyond in the Northeast region of USA. So your help and support truly helps us to create content and provide support back to the community that we serve. So thank you for that. Number one, we're going to give the viewers the details about it and announce it right at the end. So let viewers, let us know if you guys can take a guess at this number one. Best bowling came in his last spell as a test cricketer. Eight for 38. His average was 29.09. Early days, he was one of the spinners that really played a lot of test matches for West Indies. Held his, his spot in the team game after game. He played 79 test matches for West Indies during the period of 1958 to 1976. He took 309 wickets for 8,989 runs, a world record holder. First beating Freddie Truman, the English fast medium bowler who had 308 wickets. There you go, Mark, giving you all the details, guys. Who do you guys think it is? Mark, do you want to announce and let the viewers know, man, who number one is? Lance Gibbs. If you haven't checked out our top 10 West Indies all-rounders of all time video, you guys will find it on the screen right here. Until next time, Mark Audin and Nabil Khan from The Reverse Scoop signing off. Have a great night, everybody.